cuando yo tengo la manito levantada, eh, yo sé que habían leído mis comentarios en el chat, porque alguna referencia se hizo eh, en las presentaciones a los comentarios de chat. Y entonces estoy seguro que ya ellos sabían que mi pregunta no venía, eh, no iba a ser una pregunta de esa ahí, una bola, eh, eh, una bola franca por en medio de home para que la votaran de jorrón, sino que iba a ser una, eh, una pregunta compleja. Y, y con la manita levantada y la, eh, la moderadora dice, oh, nadie va a preguntar, no veo manos levantadas. Y yo abro mi micrófono y digo, no, no, yo tengo la mano levantada desde hace como 15 minutos. Y entonces me dicen, bueno, pues toma la palabra. Y ahí es que comienzo eh, la pregunta. Les voy a poner primero mi pregunta y les voy a traducir la pregunta. Quiero que noten las caras. Eh, las caras cuando yo hago la pregunta. Perfect, perfect. Uh, ok, I had um, a couple of observations and a, and a question. Uh, first of Tanya said that uh, Black Lives Matter um, shows to start with uh, the white supremacist leadership instead of uh, with Black Lives. Uh, I think that's a great uh, oversimplification. Uh, Because we need to understand, I mean, I think black oppression uh, needs to be understood not, not as a, just a particular government against black bodies. It is a relation of, of, of the way the patriarchal capitalist society has always oppressed black people and people of color. And to just view the Cuban government as the oppressor of people of color and not view the global oppression to which the people of color in Cuba are also affected by this global oppression, including the blockade, which is a lot more than, than a myth, as she also referred to the myth of the blockade. Uh, it's not just a myth, and this is where I'm going with my question, because we talked about change in Cuba, and since then we are ignoring um, nearly 200 years of, um, really 200 years the inherencia of, of, of American interference in Cuban affairs, trying to corrupt Cuban politics. Let's not remember, because the way sometimes I hear people speak here, is as if the Cuban Revolution was born uh, as this deformed, malevolous, caricaturous, dictatorship with the idea of oppressing people. Let me finish my question. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I'm not done with the question, real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm changing, changing the question. Rather than understanding it as a process that has also been deformed and made this way by so-called American democracy and the way it's acted upon it. And now to present the idea of this multi-party liberal democracy as real democracy, but even here in the U.S., we see that the will of the people does not reflect the actual policy. What exactly are you offering the Cuban people that it's not that does not become the typical liberal democracy that there is in the rest of Latin America, where just the, the, the form of democracy? Okay, thank you. I think we do have our question. Um, we need to make sure that we're able to hear from a couple of people. So, Tanya, I believe that was directed at you, and I think you got some sense of what direction um, the question was going in, if you'd like to respond. He was kind of... Oh, sorry, Tanya, you're on mute. You're on mute. On mute. Can you hear me now? So, it was a little hard for me to understand, but I want to, to clarify one thing. I never said the white supremacists in the Cuban government, I said the Black Lives Matter supported white privileged men over brown and black people. That's very different. Um, but uh, I, I, uh, I've been, for many, many years, I've been in the realm of people who are talking about turning down the blockade and basically to the end of the question what is offered that is not a typical liberal democracy okay great i think that's a great question um he said uh, what is offered that is not a typical liberal democracy that does not democratically reflect the will of the people that's a great question thank you for writing reading it down um just just me. um i think in cuba we have the opportunity 
to create a new form of government. The fact that we are 60 years behind the world, the fact that we saw how the end of communism happened in Eastern Europe, we have seen the way in which in the United States also democracy at some point did not work when you had Donald Trump um, and all the loopholes that democracy can have to heighten non-democratic um, issues and, and uh, social injustice and so on. I think what will excite me, exactly, it has not worked for 100 years yet. What excites me with Cuba in terms of politics is first of all trying to detach the um, the future of Cuba from the United States. Right now, the government blames everything over to the United States, and sometimes uh, the dissident has also aligned in the United States in order to. I understand that the the synergy has to happen, but I would love to have a government that do not use the United States to justify its inadequacy, but also a country that is free from any inherencia from another country, whether it's the United States or Russia or China, and that creates its own pattern into justice and wealth uh, for all. So I wish that in Cuba there is no liberal, uh, format, but that there is a council of people, a group of people in power that works over expertise, that creates um, a, that creates uh, systems to hear the people and to make these demands heard, and also a government that is flexible enough to change what is not working. You know, and, and first of all, to keep whatever the revolution had done or wanted to do properly, like education and so on, and bring freedom. So I think the problem is right now that regarding Cuba, the dichotomy is or you have your individual rights and you don't have social rights or collective rights, or you have collective rights and you lack individual rights. I would like a government that gives you both. Great. I don't know if that answers your question. No, mira, hay algo claro en lo que ella dice. Yo quiero un país que esté separado del discurso de la injerencia de los Estados Unidos. Esa es una Pero es que eso no es un deseo. Eso es una realidad. Eso es una realidad. Que, que Cuba está, donde está hoy, producto de eso. Que fue por eso es el preámbulo que le hago la pregunta. No, es que, bueno, yo, ¿Cómo tú no? quieres lograr lo otro sin resolver este problema? Oye, el problema manchale. inicial. Tenemos aquí, es el, el pecado original, el problema de todo, el huevo que antecede a la gallina. ¿no? Ahí tenemos el, 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 el asunto. Es la injerencia americana. Y tú quieres todo lo demás sin haber resuelto esto. ¿Cómo tú puedes dar ese paso? Eh, ¿Te das cuenta Yo que quiero ir hay, a la luna. Hay, hay o un engaño muy grande, es decir, haciéndose los locos adrede para sí, engañar claro. al pueblo por las prebendas que tiene, o, una, o, o, un, o un desconocimiento de historia y de política inmenso, claro. que en el caso de ella es posible. Obviamente no es muy lista cuando se trata política. En el caso de Cuesta Morúa, no.